All right, folks. It's me, Eric Helms. I'm back from writing the magical nutritional rainbow, and now we're talking about our regular scheduled programming of the question and answers. Okay, so I've got two question and answers today that I'm going to fi finish in the same video because I think they're really closely related and they're both good questions. Number one, uh, what are the relationships between frequency, intensity, volume, and how can you manipulate these variables in programming for different goals such as strength, hypertrophy, while cutting, bulking, and so on? Number two, um, what are your thoughts on auto-regulating uh, volume and intensity as a natural bodybuilder? Uh, wouldn't it trend you towards doing less volume and intensity uh, when you're having a shitty day and doing more uh, when you are feeling beast mode and you're having a good day in the gym? All right, so great questions. Let's start with just getting on the same page and talking about frequency, volume, intensity. We're going to bring it in a little closer. So the cornerstones of a program are frequency, intensity, and volume. These are the big picture things, and we're going to talk about them in three ways. What is it? How does it influence adaptation? Beep and beep. And then what are some of the optimal ranges that make most sense for the goals of strength and muscle gain? So frequency is how many sessions per mesocycle or microcycle or week that you're doing. So that means uh, training the same movement or muscle group in a given week or microcycle. Okay? Volume is how much work is done. This is typically expressed as sets or reps per body part or the total tonnage for a movement. Okay? Uh, and then finally, intensity, which is a combination of the rep range and how close to failure you're getting. So how much weight is on the bar and how close do you take that set to failure and how many reps are you doing? Or an easier way to say it is rep range and rating of perceived exertion or RPE, which we've talked about in previous videos. Now, how do these things influence adaptation? Why do they matter? Well, the big one, intensity on the bottom right, is that it determines the adaptation. So if you're going to be doing uh, one rep maxes, that is pretty much going to be exclusively for training strength. If you're going to be doing you know, 12 and 10 reps and 15 reps, you will get stronger, but you're going to be doing a lot more work uh, towards hypertrophy. And if you were to do, let's say, 25 reps, it would be pretty much exclusively muscular endurance. So this determines the adaptation. Now, frequency and volume are both two ways of really just getting more volume. It's how much work you do and how frequently you do it. So it's how much work you do in a given period of time. So the volume, which is these basically together, uh, in terms of how it influences adaptation, is going to determine the magnitude of the adaptation. And this is why we have so many volume junkies. They're like, well, if a little bit is good, more is better, and a lot is great. And as much as I can possibly do is going to be optimal. And that may not necessarily be the case. But the most volume that you can recover from is going to be optimal for how quickly you can adapt. Uh, and most people aren't, aren't recovering optimally. They're doing non-functional overreaching many times. But that's for the next discussion. So we've got what is happening, what, what is the adaptation, and then how much of a magnitude you have. Obviously, if you trained one time per year, you have a very small magnitude of gains. If you did it three times per week, it would be much higher. But if you trained in the same rep range and the same load, it would probably be the same adaptation, just to a much less degree. So what kind of ranges should we be in? Well, depending on the goals, there are so many ways we could talk about this, but I don't want this to be a six-part series. I'm going to give you some ranges and what makes sense. Your frequency, anywhere between one and a half to probably three times per week hitting the same body part or the same movement, uh, depending on what you're doing. And I would say there's definitely arguments for doing uh, strength-based programs, training at maybe movements only once per week sometimes. So that's not a hard rule. As far as volume, the big one I circled there, that's reps per body part, or possibly reps per movement. Um, and, and it might be more of a movement pattern. For example, that 90 might be between... Uh, front squats and back squats, or maybe even a snatch or something included in there as well. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to do just 90 reps on one movement, except for very specific times or just if you're having fun with something. But yeah, optimal range would probably be 30 to reps per body part per session if we're talking hypertrophy, or per movement pattern if we're talking about more of a movement style training or strength. Okay, And then intensity, since we're talking about hypertrophy and strength, anywhere from one to 15 reps makes sense. And towards this end of the spectrum, it's more strength. And towards this end of the spectrum, it's going to be more exclusively hypertrophy. And in the middle, it's going to be a good blend. OK? And remember that the reps you do is also just a way of getting more volume, right? OK? And then the RPE, or how close to failure you are, 
anywhere between 8 to 10. That might mean 3 reps shy of failure all the way to going to failure, depending on the movement, what type of phase of training you're in, and how many reps you're doing on it. Okay? So, lots of different ways you can program, and it's impossible for me to do one video where I can go over all the different ways to do strength, hypertrophy, cutting, bulking, etc. But, those are the ranges that they'll all fall in probably. Alright, now, to avoid just going crazy with your volume and doing too much, thinking, oh, more is better, and not really realizing that better is better, that's where auto-regulation for natural bodybuilding comes in, the second question. So, first, how do we auto-regulate for intensity and then also volume? Well, we use an RPE. The RPE scale we've talked about before, we'll go over it again real quickly. Ten, that's your max, not necessarily one rep max, just a rep max. So if that was, if that was your five rep max and you went to five, that would be a ten. If you used slightly less weight, for example, let's say your one rep max was 460 and you did a 450 squat and you knew you had ten more pounds but you couldn't do a second rep, that would be nine and a half, okay? Nine, one rep shy of failure, eight and a half, two rep shy of failure, eight, three rep shy of failure, okay? So with a rep range, RPE determines intensity, okay? Then we have volume. Now the way we can use volume when we're auto-regulating is with what's called a fatigue percentage. The easiest way to explain a fatigue percentage is that this is how much you reduce your load by after if, if, if you're using a back offset scheme. And that's just not the only way to do it, but that's the way we're going to discuss it today. So if you were going to auto-regulate your volume, you would start with something like this. You're going to do two reps at an RPE of 9. That means we choose a load that we could do for two reps and still be one shy of failure. So basically, your three rep max. So for in this example, we're going to use 270. Maybe that's somebody's bench press. They can normally do it for three, but for day, we're, today we're just going to do sets of two. Okay. So after your first set where you do the two reps at RPE of 9, then you reduce the load by 3 to 7%. So here's an example of a 3% fatigue percentage reduction. So the closest thing you can do in the gym with normal weights would be 270 reducing to 260. It would actually be like 262 if you did exactly 3%. Now because the load is so similar to this, you might only be able to do one, two, three sets. And then I have a stop here. Now why do you stop? You stop with a fatigue percentage once you get back to the original RPE. So this would mean a higher intensity, lower volume session. This would mean a higher volume, lower intensity session. Okay, so here's the example of us doing a 3% reduction from 270, not being able to do as many sets. Here's an example of doing a 7% reduction from 270 down to 250, and because it's lighter, we can do more sets. And remember that each one of these sets is just two reps. Okay, so you can do two reps, two reps, two reps, two reps, and now this two reps, why did we stop? Because we got past an RPE 9. This might have been a 9.5 or a 10, so we ceased the set. Now we've just auto-regulated our volume. Our body has told us, look, man, I'm only going to be able to do four sets at this intensity today, so we're going to stop. Okay. Here, we've decided we want a higher volume day. We've done a 7% fatigue reduction, and we've been able to get one, two, three, four, five back offsets, and then eventually we go, boom, we hit our 9.5 or 10, and now we've stopped. But here, we've got nearly twice as much volume as here, but slightly lower load. So that is how you can auto-regulate um, your frequency and intensity and I think it is a great technique especially during prep because you don't want to dig a hole on the days you feel like crap and you do want to strike when you feel like it's beast mode. Alright guys thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.